on tap Yingling traditional lager. Hi, I'm James Knott and today we are drinking Yingling traditional lager, sometimes shortened to just lager if you live close to where it's made. This is the flagship beer from DG Yingling and Son Incorporated, America's oldest brewery. It was opened in Pottsville, Pennsylvania in 1829. The brewery survived prohibition by brewing near beer and several other non-beer products. This amber lager is only available in 13 states and the District of Columbia. Despite Yingling's limited distribution, it is one of the nation's largest breweries. Traditional lager is 4.4% ABV and they brew with cluster and cascade hops. Many online reviewers consider this to be an easy drinking beer with decent flavor that is a step up from many of the American macro brews. Adam, what kind of flavors are you pulling out of this? It's very smooth. Uh, there's, a, there's a light hop, but there's enough of a, enough a hop that you can notice it. It's got a sweet citrus kind of hint to it, and then a very light, clean finish to it. I think it's a nice drinking beer. Okay, and Joby, tell us about the pour on this one. Well, James, when we poured this beer, it took a very aggressive pour to get any resemblance of a head. Um, I, th I think if you would have tilted the glass and poured it smooth, it would just almost have been a non-existing head. So um, it's kind of soapy, uh, not really lacy, but you know it kind of sticks around a little bit in the glass. So all in all, the gar the carbonation's good. You can see the bubbles. Okay, Scott, uh, tell us about the aroma on this one. Honestly, it's all malt to me. I know that it's uh, uh, one that's supposed to be a step above a lot of other lagers that are mass produced. But for me, this, I don't know, I, I much prefer something a little bit cleaner smelling. And this one's just kind of a little bit overwhelming for me on the malty side. Adam, tell us about the limited distribution and how you think it affects demand. I really think that because of the fact that it, it's only available in certain states, that it, it is popular in those states that don't have Yangling. Uh, I know here in Ohio, it is, it, it's, it's a fan favorite. Any, anybody that has Yangling, they get very excited about it because it's not available in Ohio. And it is. It's, it's a decent drinking beer. It's a, it's a nice, uh, it's a true session beer. It's a nice replacement for your, your Miller Lights or something like that. Okay. Joby, do you feel like the green bottle has affected the flavor at all? James, you know, typically when you think of green bottle beers, everyone has this preconceived notion that it's going to be skunky because the light gets in and affects the beer and, you know, in turn makes it a little skunkier. But, you know, for these, it's all about how you preserve them and keep them in the box or keep them in the fridge and not let the sunlight get them. So, you know, for this case that we have, I don't think it, I don't think it has, you know, that green bottle syndrome, if you will. So um, I, I know if, if people have never heard of this beer, which I find it highly unlikely, they might see it and see, you know, the green bottle and might throw it in with the other green bottle beers and might be uh, shied away from it. Okay. Chef, what's your big picture rating? I give it an eight. I, I, I'm, I'm probably in with, with those Ohio groups where any time that I can get a, my hands on it, I drink it. I mean, I, I buy every time I go out of the state of Ohio. I buy a couple of cases of it and bring it back home and I drink it. It's, it's a nice, true session beer. It's something that I would recommend uh, to replace your, your, your BMCs okay. uh, as an everyday drinker. Joby, what, what's your big picture rating on this yeah, one? Yeah, I'm, I'm right there along, along the same lines as Chef with an eight. Um, like he was saying, anytime you can replace this, uh, for me, a typical BMC drinker, if I can get my hands on, y on Yingling, um, I'm going to pick it up and drink it. Uh, again, I, I was introduced to this in college, and again, a lot of this is a favorite beer amongst a lot of college kids. So um, it's it's clean, it's it's smooth, it's not a lot, you know, big aftertaste. So it's easy to drink, and uh, I think it's a great beer. So Scott, are you on the Yingling bandwagon with these guys? Uh, not as much as them, honestly. I think for me, it's more kind of a an acquired taste. I think with drinking this a little bit more, and again. I've really only had Yingling a handful of times, maybe three or four times. And again, I didn't have it in college and just started drinking it maybe a year ago. So I think with, uh, with time, maybe it would grow on me a little bit more. But right now, I give it a six. It's something I would drink any time happily. And again, it's right up there with any of the other BMC beers. But for me, it's just kind of an average beer, six for now. All right, Yingling Traditional Lager scores a 7.3 on the BBA scale. Pick some up next time you're in the Keystone State. 
Do you wish Yingling was available where you live? Let us know in the comments section. Thanks for watching. I'm James Knott, and this is your Better Beer Authority. Better Beer Authority. Better Beer Authority.